Hey guys, how's it going? Today we're going to be mounting up this auto rotating wall mount. So let's go over a couple things. First one is, is if you are using the frame TV or of course the uh, 8K TVs and you're going to be using this mount, make sure that you uh, plug this guy in first. Now, depending on your TV, we'll see if my mold's good this time, but it can be a little bit tight in there. So you can just put that in. And then this piece, you pop out, Let's see if I can get it, yep. Make sure this is fully seated. Go ahead, take this guy, slide that little piece just like that. All right, from there, open this pack of screws. If you have the frame TV, that's a 65 inch, use the C holes. If you have the QN900B, 800B or 700B or the QN95B, you might have to use the A or the B hole, but you won't need those for the frame. The frame is just the C. So, next thing you wanna do is where it says aim at the top, put this on here, lift this up to the C, as you can see I have it lined up there, and put those four screws in the C holes. After you put these screws in, you're good. Now, I should note for you guys that if you're using one of the 8K, you probably will have to put a, these little spacers in behind the plate. So it'll go screw, plate, and then spacer. And the reason why is, of course, it caps out a little bit sooner in those and you don't wanna crack the panel. So if you feel that you're tightening up and that plate's still loose, make sure you use these spacers. Other than that, make sure you come over here. You'll see the H pack, there's eight screws in here. We're gonna take this, I'm gonna slide this onto those on here. You'll see the line up and then, then put in those eight screws. Again, you're gonna feel it sink on there and it'll fit in the grooves. Don't try to force it, it's very, very smooth. And then if you want to, go ahead and just preload all the screws, just like I'm doing now, and go ahead and tighten them in. I would personally do them just because I know that it's probably uh, not the strongest metal. I wouldn't use an impact, but if you want to, be very gentle. Next is this little piece right here. We need it to be, so if you were to come straight down, you want this to be on this side. So if this was to be a straight line all the way down, you want it to come right beside it and you don't want it to go above here. So that way it goes something like right about there. Like I said, you wanna be able to draw a straight line down pretty much from these screws and this would be on this side of the center line and under this line. And then just press it down so it sticks. Once you've gone ahead and stuck this on, again, you might have this a little higher if you've got the 8K TVs because they don't have this line right here, but this would still go around here, over here. Now with the 8K TVs, they come around and then they go like this. But with the TV that we're using, which is the frame, it just comes up and through and around like that. And then what you're gonna want are these little stickies here. And you're gonna go ahead, take a little sticky, and you're gonna try and secure it in here using these little black stickies it comes with. And again, that just comes down and around like that. Perfect, just not the prettiest job, but it doesn't have to be as long as it holds it. And it just comes like that. For both of them, you'll want to plug in the AC. Just sits like that and just sits down like that. Go ahead, put these through and sink it in and it just goes like that. So again, this is how it'll work for this TV. With the 8K, you might have this a bit higher. And then if we were to pop this back open, rather than wrapping it around like I have it here, the 8K wraps around over here and then comes through. Super important to note that. That's it. Next thing you need is your plate and these two pieces. These just sit just like this on top. Now, I wanna be super clear about something. You can technically mount these right to the wall and not use this wall plate. Personally, I'll leave it up to you. It's way easier to level the TV by 
using this wall plate. Yes, it's gonna stick a tiny bit more away from the wall because this wall plate is like a couple millimeters thick. I'll leave it up to you, personal preference here. I'm leaving the wall plate on. If not, go ahead, you can mount these. Just make sure, again, you measure from here to here and you keep that same distance because you're gonna have to slide the TV onto there. And again, these have to be exactly level. They do have levelers on there. If you tighten and loosen these, it will go, it will bring it up and down minorly for leveling the TV. If you're like me and you're gonna use that, this plate, go ahead and open up and grab these four screws from the U package. And then you just put them on here so they sink, make sure up is aiming up. Another trick for you, if you were to take this wall plate, level it on the wall, and you took a very small hook pick, you could, or not even a hook pick, just a pick, you could poke the wall exactly where these are and mount these straight to the wall once again. Um, because you're gonna poke right through these two holes, so it'll line up right with those holes. And it'll work just the exact opposite. So that is another option for you. All right, let's make some measurements. First thing, put this on here, slide it up. If you measure from here to right about here, you're probably at around 12.3 to 12 and a half inches. Um, if we come over here to this manual, which I'll bring over here, we have some measurements right here. I wanna explain them to you. So as you can see, this is the most important, Y1. So when you look at Y1, as you can see, for these two, the inches is 11.9 and 9.6 for a 55, 11.9 for a 65, and that's for these model numbers. For the LSO3B, it's telling you it's about 12.3. When I measured, it was closer to 12 and a half, but again, this can change a little bit. I would just go off 12 and a half. And that's the most important measurement, now you know. The rest of it, which is awesome with this wall mount, this is your centering mark. So make sure this is center of the wall. You have a centering hole screw, which is perfect. So if you have a wood stud in the center, you can put this on there and then use Hilti toggles on the side. I'll show you what those look like afterwards. Let's just finish up this first. So if you have studs on 16, we'll be mounting here and here and here and here. And if you just have a center stud, you'll mount it here and then we'll use some... Uh, Hilti toggles, which are good for 200 pounds, and you could probably just even do one here and one over here. This center stud should be more than enough. These are just gonna keep it from trying to rotate ever. Once we, uh, now that we have all those measurements though, like I said, this is the most important measurement. Keep in mind that when you're measuring from even here to the bottom, that the difference from when this rotates, well, not this, but the TV rotates, is about a foot. So you have to be at least 12 inches up for it to clear whatever you're mounting it on, which it'll actually probably be a little bit more than that because as it rotates, you're going to have corners as well. It's gonna come as a deeper sweep, so I'll let you know the exact measurement as we go. So when I'm measuring this from the corner, the center of rotation is about 33. So that tells me that if I go to the right to the diagonal corner, it's 33. And if I go down to that corner, we're 33 as well which tells me right from the center of the TV pretty much, or the center location where this is, um, it's gonna rotate 33, important to note. All right, so what I did, another measurement I did was the bottom of the TV to the top of the plate, the mounting plate, it's 20 inches. Now we want a total of 36 inches from that top of that plate to the bottom at least to make sure it'll do a rotation, which I'm fine here because my bottom plate is gonna have more than enough here. I'm actually gonna be at least 29 inches from um, any object. So the bottom of my TV is gonna be at 29 plus 20, which would put me at 49, which puts me well past the 36 inch threshold. So now that we've got that, the next thing I would do is I've just, I know this is about center-ish, so I would come here and I would mark off 49, now I've got my height. Then I'd wanna find out my center, and let's say I found my center, I would put it like that, so that way I know I have my center. 
And then we have to figure out our studs. Well, for me, take a look at that. I have a center stud. So it's gonna be centered on that stud. Now, if yours wasn't, let's say this was to the left, and then over here would be to the right, you would mark them both out, so that way you could tag off of the corners like I showed you with your mount. With me, I'm gonna be using the, that center hole and then adding two Hilti toggles, which I'll show you in a second. So, we come right here. We make sure again, our top is aiming at top. I know that this is my line here. And if we come right here, I can now level this. Now that we've gone ahead and leveled it, I'm gonna mark out, these are gonna be my two that are gonna go into the wood. And then I'm gonna have two bracers, which are gonna be up here, which are gonna go into drywall. And I might actually just end up putting them right here. So one right there and one right there. So now that I got this level, this is all good. Let's go ahead and drill some holes. So these are your Hilti toggles. How they work is we drill a uh, half an inch hole. This folds inward, slides in the hole. We uh, flip it up and we zip tie it right up into the drywall. I'm gonna show you how they work. So we've got our holes marked where they're gonna be from here. Make sure we're nice and tight so we don't lose our drill bit. Just like that. I like to sometimes just wiggle it a little bit, get a little bit more. And then right here. There we go. Now that we've gone ahead and done that, like I said, turn it sideways, slide in the hole. Just like that, break off the tip. Grab that bolt after. This should sit flat. Now, if it doesn't, it could be because if there's drywall that has insulation in there, it can get caught on the insulation. So just make sure it's as flat as possible on the tip. It's not off angle. There we go. And that is how you install Hilties. So from here, we're gonna go ahead and just get these Hilties started. I'm just gonna do this. Be very careful when using an impact. If you've never used Hilti before, you should probably use uh, a screwdriver because if you put too much pressure on these, you can crack the drywall and then it's useless. There. And then, like I said, if you wanted to, you could finish it with your hand. Uh, from here, we're gonna check our level. When it comes to these Samsung bolts, they use a specialty kind of Phillips. So one thing is, is you can use a number two, just make sure you use a brand spanking new one and you should be able to get them in there. If you don't use a brand spanking new one, chances are you're gonna end up, uh, well, doing that. Lots of even pressure. we go and that's mounted so like I said and if we like I said if we were lucky enough to have a stud here we can put it here and right here in this case we did the Hilties now that we got this we're gonna do a couple more measurements drill a hole and hide the wire so for me I know the uh, stud gap I want to hit so what I'm gonna do is measure right here and from what I was measuring if we go to 14 a good healthy number so and I know I have a stud in the center so I'll probably bring it over just a little bit and right there and then what I'm gonna do is just cut a hole in here and pass my wiring through to the other side to do that for me I'm just gonna hole saw for you if you're gonna cut in a plate and make it all proper just make sure you don't put a nose plate or anything on because it could catch on the mount when it rotates I wouldn't do that I would just simply put a small hole so the wire can pass through Cool trick for you if you want to you can uh, either just drill right through or for me i just like to put a marker hole right through go to the other side and drill right through 
So that way, for example, there's a closet in behind here and we're gonna be putting this in a closet where there's power. So in this case, I'm just gonna pass it there or if you're gonna just bring it down lower, uh, maybe it's below it or behind a chair or something, you can always do that. All right, perfect. So the next thing to do is lift our TV up here. You could even brace it right here. And what we're gonna do is just pass our wires right through here and then keyhole our TV on with those two keyholes that are on the back of the TV. Literally just goes on and then slides down to lock on. Before I put my plates on, as you can see, we've got that right there. The wires come out. This is the power to the mount. And then the other one, and that comes over to here. And again, this is just roughed in for right now, plugged in our one connect box into a power bar. And that's right here. This is gonna get a right angle adapted power bar. This is a temporary power bar. And then it'll come up here and like I said, is cable box and other little devices will sit up here. And that's it. Let's go test them out. Once it's all there, go ahead, click these two, hold it. Both at the same time, of course. You'll see it starts blinking. And look at that. It should just be connecting it. Right now, connecting the accessory of the rotating accessory. After it pairs with your remote, you will come here. Click this, click and hold it, and you'll see, there you go. It's gonna start to rotate. And look at that, it switches the apps for you. Everything looks good there. And then from right here, you're gonna come here, click it again. Okay. And it's gonna go just like that. And it should rotate again. There you go, part way through. And if you're curious about the distance from the wall, there you go. It's gonna be a little bit, but nothing big. And then from here, if you're gonna add a bezel, go ahead and add the bezel, and that's it. If you download the Samsung Smart Things app, you would click on the art. Once you click on art, you can add your own photos. And as you can see, we're just gonna select this flower next. Uh, once we select the flower here, you can go ahead and you can do it with, uh, without a mat or with a mat. Uh, most people will do it with a modern mat. And if you click on that, you can click next. You can change the color of the mat. You'd go all the way to gray if you wanted, or we could try and keep it brown or green, whatever we want to do. Let's just try this brown one. We'll say set the frame. As soon as we do that, it'll say it's setting the frame settings. And we should see it switch there. It actually left the white mat, but that is what it'll do once you set it. If it doesn't do it right away, if you hit the mat and filter, you can literally select the different colors. So we can hit the blue button here. Whoa. And we'll see what happens. There, now it's got a blue. We could hit orange. We'll give it a sec here. There's the orange. All right, so one thing just to note is uh, make sure for when you're editing your photo, like I was just showing you, if you want it to be in landscape, have the TV in landscape, then open the app, and then try to apply your images and edit it that way. And then if you're gonna do portrait style after you flip your TV up, you need to rotate the TV, then open the app, and make sure you close and open the art app. Otherwise, it might not show up because that's the only way you can edit it, either portrait or landscape. So have the TV in the orientation you want to edit the photo in.